Welcome back into the BSNBuffs.com Fall Camp Preview. We are here on the beautiful campus of the University of Colorado, just steps in front of the Champions Center, steps below Folsom Field. Uh, William Whalen, the editor of BSNBuffs.com, here with my assistant editor, Jake Shapiro. Jake, how you doing today? Oh, fantastic. A lovely, beautiful summer day in Boulder. Indeed, indeed. And we are talking about the defensive line unit that the Colorado Buffaloes and head coach Mike McIntyre have coming into the season. Jake, this has been a unit that has had a lot of trouble over the last couple seasons. Uh, for a number of reasons. First, it was depth. Then it was talent. Then it was self-inflicted pain. Uh, a lot of disciplinary issues on this line with guys like Josh Tupo, with Samson Kafavalu, missing time for one reason or another. We've seen a lot of guys kind of have to step in and fill roles that maybe they weren't quite ready to in years past. But now we feel like we have a decent picture about what this team looks like at this grouping. Uh, you have to talk about Josh Tupo possibly making his return on track to make his return from a year long long uh, absence uh, last year. You're talking about Kafavalu, a guy that Mike McIntyre at Media Days and in other interviews has talked about possibly being ready to return for fall camp should all of his disciplinary issues be resolved. Then you have a guy like Derek McCartney, who has been the star of this unit for the last couple of years. Jake, what do you make of the defensive line for the Colorado Buffaloes? Well, Obviously, last year they were put into a little bit of a tough spot with uh, Tupo, that whole issue. Um, Solis really stepped up last year. He's gone now. Jace Frankie stepped up, and uh, he could be a guy that steps up again. But obviously, it starts with Derek McCarthy or McCartney. Uh, I always do that. And uh, he, he's a great defensive player, and he, he's a guy that gets really overlooked on this team. Uh, he would start on any team in the Pac-12, and Colorado really doesn't have many of those guys across the board. Uh, but aside from that. Uh, you know, I'm looking at a guy like um, like uh, Leo Jackson who may yeah. be able to step up because Leo Jackson, you know, he had flashes last year and yeah. he's an interesting prospect. You look at a guy also like Jordan Correll who can really step up into a more pronounced role, uh, kind of coming in, making a name for himself at times last year. This is really a group that's going to have a lot of pressure on them because of the fact that Colorado's linebackers have just as many questions about them as the defensive line does. you got to create pressure on the quarterbacks. We've talked about it in podcasts before. The number of sacks that Colorado had in the fourth quarter last year was paltry. It was pathetic at times. Really kind of showed why those fourth quarter comebacks from other teams were aided by the Buffaloes themselves. Who do you think in this group is somebody that's going to have a breakout year that all of a sudden everybody in the Pac-12 is going to really know their name? I think I already said it. Uh, Jace Frankie is probably that candidate. I think Eddie Lopez is another guy that could potentially be there. Uh, he made some impacts the last two years at nose tackle and then he got hurt last year. But Eddie's a guy, uh, I've talked to him a lot and he has basically the perfect build for a nose tackle. He has the right attitude as well. Obviously, he's going to take a backseat to Tupo, but even if people don't know about Josh Tupo, I guess that would be the obvious one because yeah, Josh Tupo yeah. is a beast when he's playing and he's in shape. Yeah, I'm not sure opposing fans are incredibly familiar with Derek McCartney either because, quite frankly, this is a defensive line unit that hasn't made a whole lot of noise in years past. This hasn't been one of the better units for the Colorado Buffaloes in the past couple of years, so I think that if anybody's going to step up and really kind of garner that all-conference recognition, garner that attention from opposing fan bases, certainly opposing coaching staffs, I look at a guy like Derek McCartney to do that. Uh, who is the guy who has the most to prove this season in your mind? Probably Josh Tupo. I completely agree. Uh, I got a question for you. Who's the best defensive lineman uh, the last few years to see you? Is there one that even stands out? There's not necessarily a guy that stands out, uh, really, when you ask it. I mean, I think a guy like Josh Hardigan, uh, the last couple seasons that he had in Boulder were really, really impressive. Um, but even then, I mean, you're right. Who has been the star? Who has been that guy? We thought Josh Tupo was going to be his freshman season, uh, and obviously he's had one setback or another over the course of his career. It's hard to think of somebody that just jumps out at you uh, on the top of your head or even on the paper when you're looking at guys that have kind of come through this program in years past. Uh, maybe even you have to go back to uh, George Hippolyte, the last wow. time that Colorado had a guy that other you, you knew other teams were game planning for night in and night out. And that's a scary proposition that there's an entire position group at Colorado where you go, hmm, for the last 10 years, basically. Yeah. I, I think they've got a lot of upside. We're, of course, going to learn a lot more about them once fall camp kicks off. This is BSNBuffs.com. Make sure to keep it locked here for the rest of your fall camp previews leading up to kicking off football season.